Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I had a really great video uh, all put together where I made a whole bunch of hot dogs. Learned a lot in that video. I learned how to not to do a lot of things and I learned how to do a lot of things right. And it would have been a great video to put up, but uh, my SD card decided that it wasn't gonna cooperate anymore and I lost all of the footage. So, it's it's all gone and they're 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 good they're good hot dogs too um even though they're not perfect i made them out of venison pork beef trimmings and uh black bear and uh they came out really good so to make up for it today i'm gonna make uh pickled eggs using beets the purple pickled eggs got a big jar here got some sugar got some beets garlic some fresh dill eggs i got six dozen that's more than i need because some of them are not going to peel properly because they got to peel correctly uh nice and clean for you to pickle them properly got some pickling spices got some white distilled vinegar and just to give you a heads up uh my channel is not sponsored yet by anybody so it's sponsored by me there's less than a thousand subscribers at the time of this filming i think i got like uh 12 more to go to get to a thousand and then maybe I can start making a little money on these videos but I'll give you a tidbit next video is this video is sponsored by the next video and it has a lot to do with M&Ms not sponsored by them but it has a lot to do with peanut M&Ms more on that at the end of this video so make sure you watch all the way to the end and you can see what's going on coming up next week let's get started making some pickled eggs Okay, I got 24 eggs in the pot right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover them with cold water. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the heat. I'm going to start it right now, put it on high. And what's going to happen is I'm going to wait for this to get to a rolling boil. And then I'm going to set a timer. I can set it for 10 minutes if I'm going to uh, uh, just chill the eggs and, and stop the cooking process in just cold tap water. Or if I'm going to do it in ice water, I can run it all the way for 12 minutes, 11, 12 minutes, and then dunk them in ice water, stop the cooking process, and then peel them, etc. And contrary to popular belief, Baking soda, salt, vinegar, all that other nonsense you put in here doesn't do anything to help you peel it. But it, what actually helps you peel the egg is by stopping the cooking process with cold water or ice. That's what helps you peel the egg really easily and nice and clean. So we're going to run this. I got a total of six dozen, so I got to do this three times. And as soon as I got all that done, we'll come back and uh, we'll get started on the next step. All right, here we are, we're at a rolling boil. So right now, here's the time for you to go ahead and put the lid on, turn the heat off, and set your timer. I'm setting mine for 11 minutes because I'm dunking my eggs to stop the cooking in cold water. You can do 12 or so if you're gonna dunk them in ice. So I'm setting the timer right now, it's really easy. All you have to do is say, hey Siri, set timer for 11 minutes. 11 minutes starting now. And now we wait. All right, there's the 11 minutes. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of room in this corner, so pardon the camera angle. And you get these things out of here and into this bowl of cold water. Get that cooking process started. I'm sorry, I meant stop the cooking process. This one that cracked a little bit. That one might not make it into the jar. Turn that cold water on and let it go until all the eggs are nice and cold to the touch. Now we just repeat this. Uh, Five more times and uh, while well, that's happening in the background we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, making the brine okay we got all our beets right here 
If you're not married, you don't have a wife, and you don't care, go ahead and get out the wooden cutting board and use this. I'm married. I'm not going to stain the cutting board. So we're going to put that over here. I'm just going to do it on the countertop because this will wipe right up because it's that plastic formica stuff. Whatever. I just be careful I don't cut into the into the actual plastic. All right. So we're going to slice these up. Do not peel these, by the way. Do not peel them because a lot of that purple color is in the skin. Throw that in there too. Now a lot of people they put the actual beet into the into the jar with the eggs. I'm not doing that. I'm putting other stuff in there like garlic and fresh dill. What I really want to do is my water content and my brine needs to be just as much of this purple dye as possible. So we'll be sticking this into onto the stove, not into it, and uh, boiling it for quite a while. Then we'll add some vinegar, we'll add some sugar. Then we gotta let it cool down completely before we add it to the eggs. So, a lot of cases, this is probably the first thing you ought to do before you start boiling eggs. Go ahead, and get that brine ready, and uh, while it's cooling down, you can start cooking eggs. I'm using a six, is that, yeah, six beats for this one. I've done it with less before, but it actually kind of just turned the eggs pink instead of that purple color. All right, got that. I'm gonna add, <clears throat> I need approximately two quarts of liquid for this jar once it's full of eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, just to start things off, I'm gonna add two cups of water. Add the rest of it. Something's gonna evaporate. And we gotta get this started boiling and cooking them down so we get all that color out and then We'll get to a certain point where there's no more color coming out of the beets and then we'll add the vinegar and then we'll add sugar. Um, what we really need at the end of it is we need two cups of water, two cups of vinegar, and a cup full of sugar. And that should be enough, hopefully, to fill that jar up and cover all the eggs. If it's not, then I can just add, I can add some more. Um, later on if I need to, but I think right now I'm probably gonna have enough So we're gonna get this on the stove and get her started boiling All right, so the beets Have done their thing. I've extracted a lot of that good purple stain or dye or whatever you want to call it out of it and I've got this liquid here. I'm gonna let it simmer until it goes all the way down to where I get about three cups left. I was a little bit wrong earlier with how much uh, brine I actually need. I think I need about a quart and a half. So that's gonna come out to uh, three quarts of water, or in this case, my uh, beet juice, three cups of vinegar, and a cup, of ha cup and a half of sugar, plus my pickling spice. So I'm gonna let this work its way down until it's about four quarts, then I'll add <clears throat> the sugar, then I'll add the uh, pickling spice, and then I'll let it work its way down to approximately three cups. Add my vinegar, let it completely cool off, and then once it's all the way down to room temperature or even colder, 
that's when we're gonna jar it up and go from there. So in the meantime, hang tight. It'll only take for maybe a couple seconds for you guys and we'll be right there doing it in a second. Okay, we got the beet juice uh, reduced down to approximately four cups. Now we add a cup and a half of sugar. And we need to get that completely dissolved. While it's dissolving, <clears throat> I'm going to be adding, i got to open this thing up. I'm going to be adding my uh, pickling spice. I want to cook it a little bit because I want to get the the flavor of that spice kind of infused into the into the liquid. We're gonna let this uh, sit down here and reduce probably about another cup three quarters of a cup to a cup off of it. That way we have uh, three cups of liquid left. Then I'll add the three cups of vinegar, let it chill all the way down to room temperature, and then we can start jarring things up. Okay, we've reduced down to approximately three cups of liquid here <clears throat> with the beet juice. Already got the sugar and spices in there as you just saw. Now we're gonna go ahead and add three cups of white vinegar. And we're gonna start bringing this thing down to room temperature. Probably should turn the heat off real quick. One. Two. Give that a quick mix. There's my timer. Okay, so now we're just gonna set this off over here on a much colder part of the stove top and let this uh, go ahead and cool down to room temperature so we can finally start jarring these eggs up. Okay, here we are at the very end. We get to jar up all these eggs and get them pickled. We got some flies flying around. They're kind of annoying. We got a whole mess of eggs here. I've got garlic, I've got fresh dill, and I have the brine. That's all ready to go. What I'm gonna do, this is a freshly sanitized jar. I'm going to start layering things in here. And uh, kind of sort of putting things together. Looks like about six eggs per layer. Thereabouts, I don't know. We'll see how it works. But we're going to drop some garlic cloves in there. Maybe another one. I'm going to take some of this fresh dill here. I'm going to get that down. Definitely have enough eggs. I, I, I deliberately cooked too many. That way I can kind of select which ones, you know, the, the shell peeled off of better than the others. Thank you. 
drop, uh, I don't know, about five pieces of garlic right here on this layer. A little bit more dill. I better be careful of the dill. I don't have near as much as I thought I did. Here's an example of an egg that I'm not going to use. It didn't peel well. The, the yolk is fairly well exposed. I'm not putting that in there. So we can get seven on each layer from here on out. More garlic. Get some more dill in here. I'm being very selective here. I'm, I'm grabbing eggs that are don't have any real damage to speak of from the uh, taking the shell off process. That's why I did a few extra eggs. That way I got a few to spare. more in there. I can get one more actually. Some of these eggs are smaller than others. And I'm going to pack them a little bit. We're getting toward the top here. I'd like to get a few more in there. Get at least one more layer. I'd like to get two, but mm, it's kind of pushing it. Because you won't have enough liquid in here to cover everything. That's probably all I dare put in there. I got a few eggs for breakfast in the next few days. Let's go ahead and put the brine in. Looks like I probably made enough. Definitely made enough. I'm gonna jam one more egg in there to help keep them all below the surface. Oh, 
do it. Now there's a lot of controversy out there um, whether these have to be refrigerated or not. I don't follow either one of those rules. Sometimes I refrigerate them, sometimes I don't. I've never had any problems with them sitting on the counter for two or three months and as we chow through them, you do what you need to do. I mean, I don't make the rules. The FDA thinks they do, but if you feel you need to refrigerate them, go ahead and refrigerate them. So, you made it this far in the end of the video. You're about to find out why this video is sponsored by the next video. Well, almost the next video. The video that this one's sponsored, no. This video is sponsored by the video that will go up once I cross a thousand subscribers and my channel is finally, finally, since 2008, finally monetized. And it had a lot to do with M&M's, not a sponsor, all right? I'll show you right now. I picked up this vending machine at a thrift shop uh, about three months ago, something like that. And uh, what I'm gonna do with it is I'm going to completely refurbish it. Clean all the paint off, sand it down, put some new paint on it, go through everything, all the mechanisms, get it all cleaned up and work in order, and it's going to dish out peanut M&Ms. And it's gonna sit here on my counter. It takes dimes. I, I don't have a dime in my pocket, so I can't show you right now, but it takes a dime to get a handful, or a small handful, and it's simply just gonna be for my kids. It's gonna sit on my counter, full of M&Ms, Kids want to come find me and grab a dime out of my pocket and go get some M&Ms. That's what it's for. They bring their friends over. They're going to come ask me for a dime. Hey, I'll give them a dime. They're going to have some M&Ms. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry about uh, losing all the uh, footage of the uh, hot dog making experiment that turned out actually pretty good because I learned a lot, even though they're not great, but they taste great. And, um, we're going to go ahead and see you on the next video.